Hey there, YouTubers. Welcome again to another Game of Thrones video. So today, admittedly, this video is going to be shorter than one I usually do because I am actually going away this weekend for my new job and moving out of my current apartment to the next one. Right now, because I'm moving out, this is the last video you're going to have where I have this background behind me. All of this. This is gonna be the last one for quite a while where you're gonna see a background kind of like this. So with that being said, I thought maybe I would theme it a little bit. How about we do this video about another house that has moved out of their own home in Westeros, which is House Gardner. Now House Gardner were the original rulers of the Reach to the point of being known as kings even. Although the origins aren't exactly certain because there's kind of a mythical aspect involved, the Gardners ruled the Reach for something like 10,000 years before the Targaryens came around. Now supposedly, they claim the ancestry from mythical figure named Garth Greenhand, which supposedly gave them their dominion over the Reach for years and years and years. Originally, they had a smaller parcel of land than the one we know right now, but eventually built up the Reach through conquest and treaties of several areas, such as Old Town, known for its citadel, of course the Arbor for all of its wine and its navy, and the Western marches around Horn Hill, which we know pretty well because of Samwell and Randall Tarly. So you can figure out long term that these decisions made by the kings of the Reach were actually terrific ads for that region. And no shock that marriage proposals were also used to help build this land area up as well. I mean, that's how they ended up with the old town in the first place, they ended up Hightower, ended up marrying one of the Kings of the Reach children, and the king ended up marrying one of their daughters. It's pretty wild. So that's how they obtained and kind of helped keep the Reach themselves. Now, some of the notable members of House Gardner over the years include Gwaine the Gallant, and also Garth Gardner V, known as the Hammer of the Dornish, presumably due to his prowess in battle against the neighboring Dornish people, who members of the Reach and Dorne have been fighting back and forth for a very long time, even up to the events of A Song of Ice and Fire slash Game of Thrones television show. Now, unfortunately, due to lack of information, there isn't a lot of concrete stuff to go on about a lot of these warriors and many other kings from House Gardner, so I'm sorry I can't really expand on that too much, but one we definitely can expand on that is Super important and probably the most prominent member of the entire house is Garth Gardner VII. He was the king of the Reach and arguably known as their greatest king in the history. He ruled for roughly 81 years after being crowned as a tween, a 12 year old, doing a terrific job of defending the Reach and making it prosper during times of peace. He fought off the Dornish almost instantly when he was crowned. So that was a pretty impressive thing considering the Dornish had always been going at the Reach and he was only a little boy. Eventually Garth came up with a brilliant idea to prevent any invasion coming at them from the Ironborn because the Ironborn love to attack the Reach as well as the Westerlands too. So what they did was he pushed all of the Ironborn that had somehow made it on the mainland out. And what he did was he took his own best warriors and also best sailors and put them on the islands that are known today as the Shield Islands. What his plan was was to put them on there and they would basically breed warriors. They would be able to fend off the Ironborn from that island right there, the first line of defense, AKA a shield, and the Ironborn would never be able to make it to the mainland. And that's exactly what happened. This breeding actually worked super well. The Ironborn never really got to invade Highgarden again, unless I guess you technically count season seven of Game of Thrones, which I don't. My other favorite thing he accomplished was when he actually defeated the King of the Rock, the Westerlands, and Stormlands, who intended on pairing up to take over the Reach for themselves. But amazingly, somehow, 180, he ended up coming out of it where they kind of turned against one another, and the Reach ended up stronger as ever, establishing their borders between those two areas. Now, on a more uninteresting point, he did bring a stretch of 75 years of peace in the Reach, for the citizens known as the Golden Reign. That's what it's formally called. You know, I, I like, obviously that's pretty cool. That's great. If I was in the reach at the time, I would have loved that stretch of time. However, it's kind of boring, but it is really unheard of as far as Westeros is concerned. So it's actually a pretty impressive accomplishment, even though it's, you know, kind of boring in the grand scheme of things. Eventually, years down the road, the Andal invasion occurred with the reach generally untouched, with more of the middle section and northern part being affected by that whole deal. Now, they did make their way down to where the Reach was, but by that point, House Gardner knew how to deal with them. They just worked on a system of assimilation rather than just trying to fend them off. They're like, yeah, you can join our society. That's fine. We'll find a way to get you in here. So that's what they did. And actually, the Tyrells first popped up as a result of being with the Andals. Alistair Tyrell actually came along from the Andals, and he was made the actual protector of the King of the Reach, which was Gwaine V. 
And ultimately, the Tyrells, as a result of all this, ended up becoming super loyal stewards of House Gardner from then on. There was actually a period of time where a Tyrell ended up ruling as a regent in the stead of a Gardner. So while the Gardner king still ruled, a Tyrell jumped in for a short period of time and actually ruled. So it gives you an idea of how trusted they were within the area. Now, during King Garth X's reign, also known as Garth Greybeard, the Dornish attacked High Garden when it was vulnerable and they basically they killed the king. They slayed him, he's dead, and they destroyed the Green Hand throne that they had been sitting on for years and years and years, which was called the Oaken Seat, kind of like you think about the Iron Throne or the Salt Throne. A lot of these seats have some kind of element associated with them, and this one is oak because, you know, grassy stuff. So the Reach was in a bad spot, but the Tyrells, actually, the ancestors back in the day, they ended up helping pick up the pieces for the Reach after the attack on Highgarden and installed a new gardener on the throne again because the previous king, unfortunately, only had daughters and wasn't able to carry on the line. But still, House Gardener was kind of regressing throughout this entire thing. So inevitably, they were going to get towards their end. Unfortunately, it ended up being a fiery one. At the end of their tale here, the gardeners were ultimately wiped away by the Targaryens during Aegon's conquest. Now, hearing about Aegon's invasion, King Myrn the Ninth Gardener teamed up with the Westerlands to wipe them out. Unfortunately, Aegon and his sisters brought all their dragons and completely wiped out the houses. This happened in a skirmish known as the Field of Fire, and for all of you who ended up watching the show in the previous season, when Daenerys rode in on her dragon, that was a pretty big deal. Everyone saw this Field of Fire 2.0, especially because the Lannisters were involved. So with King Myrne falling in battle as well during that time, it was Harlan Tyrell that surrendered to Aegon in the end. And in return for him surrendering, Aegon proclaimed that the Tyrells would be the new Lords of Highgarden. So yeah, the Gardeners were essentially moved out of their lush Highgarden, despite how much work they did to keep it going, and how they were fairly good kings for the most part. Now thankfully we got the sweet House Tyrell that we've come to love, great Marjorie, some, uh, some Laris in there, you get some Olena, that idiot Mace, you got some Garland in there, and some Willis, I mean you gotta love good characters from House Tyrell. But that's the thing about House Tyrell, it's probably why they have the Flowers of Sigil, they stick around for a while, and the weed just starts growing and growing until eventually they end up blooming the highest of everyone else. So, pretty impressive for the Tyrells to end up that way, unfortunately for the Gardeners, they spent all that time and had to leave, just like me, out of my apartment. <laughs> but that's going to do it for the video. Thanks so much for watching, as always. I hope you enjoyed this video about House Gardener. If you want to see more videos, please leave suggestions down below. I would love to do some. I'm going to be making a ton. Um, I have to kind of like pre-make a bunch of them before I end up going off to my job for a couple months. But I still am going to give you video content. So if there's something you want to see, I would love to make it for you while I'm gone. If you want to see more videos of mine, you can check out some of these right up here. I have a whole playlist of Game of Thrones What If videos that people seem to enjoy. Also, I have some other Game of Thrones down below, just some random things like top five lists I enjoy. Also, if you want to see more in the future, just hit the subscribe button right up here to make sure you get all the notifications of my new uploads right when I do it. Otherwise, hope you have an amazing day, everybody. You take care. Goodbye.